Hello everybody! If you have seen one of my last videos about how I got 1510 in my first attempt, you may have noticed that I got full 800 in my math section. And today we're gonna, we're gonna explore how I got this score and what kind of resources and strategies I used to get the score. So let's get started. As I have told in my last video, I've used SAT Pen the mouse for instruction and learning purposes, but I use 600.io for finding practice-based questions. But more than this, I have done a lot of work to improve my math score. And as I prepped individually, I relied and exploited the power of internet. So I searched and watched literally every video that is available in the YouTube on this SAT content. And you, it doesn't have to be really SAT specific content. We just have to type the name of the concept and watch what is available in the internet. And one of the channels I found really useful is John SAT, Organic Chemistry Tutor, and Tutor Linear Prep. And honestly, there are tons of videos you have, you can find, and tons of channels you can utilize. But these channels provided me with their tutorial lessons that was really beneficial. And separately, I want to note that I have benefited mainly and largely uh, from the content of Tutorial in Prep, especially like I watched his Otto Chenta videos, which is immensely beneficial. I would highly recommend it. And the other strategy I use it that helped me a lot in SAT math section is tracking my mistakes in a separate note or separate sheet. So for this purpose, I use it Google Document or you can even use Notion, which is really pervasive now. What you would do is just store the question and the mistakes you have done in your practice test, or even the questions you have struggled in your preparation or in your Khan Academy preparation, and you just have to work on them later on. In that way, you can track and measure how you are progressing over time. Other thing I used that was really beneficial, I think I have even told it in my last video, was blind reviewing. Blind reviewing is basically, you would have to solve a practice test, and blue book especially, and then you just have to go back to this college board site, and then you would have to blindly review. You don't have to look at the solution which was given by college board, you will have to solve the question again and then look at the college board's explanation and then you would have to go to YouTube and type the like number of the practice test and it will literally come out and you would have to observe and watch other YouTubers solving this particular question and in that way you would like go, go through these four or five steps and in that way one question becomes consolidated and along the way you will learn some test taking strategies and also some shortcuts and believe me guys shortcuts are really important to you to be able to like manage your time in your SAT and so in that way you can learn even shortcuts for math and even for English and the other thing I highly recommend is fully mastering Desmos I haven't actually brought any kind of calculator with me on my exam uh, like to calculate equations in maths, but there is built-in calculator in Bluebook app that is called Desmos, and literally it can solve all of these two-dimensional problems and even the regressions. And you don't have to bring any kind of calculator. And one thing you have to do though is to sufficiently utilize it while practicing in Bluebook Blue exams. And I have used the same approach and I haven't even struggled in the math section. And going back to specific content of SAT maths, I would always urge every student who would ask any kind of advice is to master the linear equations section fully, because linear equations probably make up 50% of the math section, and in order to increase your score, you would have to learn a lot of these concepts in this particular section. And first of all, learn how to do slow, definitely. You don't have to make a mistake in this. And the second thing, be able to pinpoint and identify parallel lines. 
third equation, and especially it is done by slope. And the third, there is one tricky linear equation which is which would lie on top of another and have infinitely many solutions. This is really tricky. In order to identify this, you'd have to look at the equations, the two equations, slope and then y-intercept, which is one of the differentiating factors of parallel lines and this tricky line. So parallel lines, you need to always look at the slope similarity, but not y-intercept, right? In those equations that have infinitely many solutions, we'd have to look at both. And finally, you would have to learn standard forms. We would have to learn how to convert two standard form from mx plus b, and then convert two standard form from mx plus b. And honestly guys, SAT would always throw these kind of tricky questions, there would inevitably be some sort of trap questions, so that's why they would not give you the simple mx plus b, there would be standard form which would consume a lot of your time and be able to convert it. And the next thing is exponential questions, which is really pervasive and actually I have seen one this little challenging question about exp exponential questions that was really hard, but I was able to do this but it took me a lot of time to solve it. and. One tricky component of this exponential questions is finding its y-intercept and in finding it, placing zero in the degree of the slope would always give 1. So don't be tricked by this, it would not give 0 but 1. And then it would ultimately change the outcome of the whole equation. The next thing, this tricky 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 unit conversions. It may seem a little bit simple but when raise it to a certain degree, it would become really really complicated because guys one meter is indeed 100 centimeter but one meter squared is not always 100 centimeter squared so be able to raise to a certain degree be even if you are calculating all of these equations in desmos there would inevitably be some sort of word confusions number confusions so just be careful with these unit conversions and try to practice them and the last thing always practice with blue book exams wisely because you have just success and even PCT test but you have to master all of the questions and analyze all of the questions and while in exam you have to double check your answers double checking is really important there would inevitably be some slip-ups or unnoticed mistakes that bring your score down so by double checking you would try to correct them and increase your scores and double checking, you would be able to correct this kind of little little unit conversion mistakes or even this exponential question mistakes. So double checking is really important if you have time. Always be able to manage your time wisely. The other thing I would urge you to do is to internalize the discriminant formula and equations. I'm not saying memorize, I'm saying internalize. Because internalizing these equations, you have to memorize it and put it into practice by solving this questions, the specific question stating that there is two theories of the parabola, which is x and set, and also the solution of the parabola. Or maybe one solution, one zero, one x and set, or even no solution. There will be no x and set. Be able to identify these kind of patterns in these questions and apply it to the discriminant formula. And finally, statistics. Statistics may be a little bit of tricky, especially one is standard deviation. Standard deviation actually the measure of how the data set spread out. The more the data set spread out, the higher the standard deviation. So be able to pinpoint and know this shortcut. The other thing, learn what it is outliers. Basically outliers is extremes. They may be either too low or too high. So be able to identify them and margin of error. Learn how margin of error can affect our statistical estimates and how we can draw these proper conclusions from these population samples. And lastly, learn even the strange and different diagrams. One little tricky one would be box plot, or we can even say whisker plot. Basically, the two ends is maximum and minimum, and the middle is the median. So this part is crucial, which is the kind of the trend in SAT questions. And finally, learn what is the sample and how we can generalize 
the sample to a larger population, which may be a little bit tricky when you don't know this kind of concept. Well, I think I was able to share really tricky parts of SAT mass and what kind of areas you have to focus on seriously. So always stay tuned for the next experiments and the videos.